Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to episode two of this mini series where we're programming a whole bunch of different high tech servos uh, using the DPC 11 programming interface. For many years, high tech had the DPC 10 interface and that only allowed you to program the brushless or the HSB series servos. But now with the 11, this allows you to program all three of the major families of programmable high-tech servos, and that includes the newer D-series, the brushless servos, the HSB servos, and then the 5000 and 7000 series servos like the 7954s, 7955s that we've all probably had over the years. In this episode, we're going to be programming the HSB, the brushless servos, and they're a little different than the D series that we did last time. So I'm going to show you the differences in programming, what you have to be careful for, and the different parameters that you can save and load and program on these servos. I'd like to thank my friends at High Tech USA for sending me this DPC 11 and a few servos to program. And without any further ado, let's head over to the bench and get to work. So let's start with connecting the DPC-11 to your machine. So first we have the 11 itself, we have a battery, and we have the servo that we're going to program. In this case, uh, it's an older HS series servo. So step one, we are going to connect the USB to our computer and we'll see a light come on. And on the title page of the application, we'll see a little green banner saying that it's connected. Next, we connect the servo to the servo port on the DPC-11. And because USB power is only five volts, we're gonna need at least six volts to program these servos. So I'm just gonna hook up a life battery, but you can also use a, a LiPo battery if you wanted to program with the full 8.4 volts. And now we see some communication occurring. So let's head over and look at the application. The DPC software starts with this welcome screen where we need to choose which type of servo we're programming, the D-series, the HSB, or the older HS series. So we're programming the HSB, so we'll choose that and go to this screen. So now we have the connect button, a start window to go back to that welcome screen. We can open and save configurations and we see there that nothing's connected. The cool difference here about the brushless servos is that we see input volts, torque, and an angle. So that's something we can look at later. But now we have our server connected, we'll hit connect and we'll see it's establishing connection. And here we go. Now we see input volts and torque and the angle. So this manual section is more like a servo tester and these buttons are the microseconds simulating a transmitter. So we have 1500, 1800, 2100, et cetera, et cetera. Going down, we have the auto section. We can do sweeps and steps and we can choose how fast we go through these. A sweep just goes from the two endpoints, and a step is a little bit different than the D series with the brushless servos. The step moves at an uh, interval of microseconds. So right now it's going about 10 microseconds per step. And if we slow it down even more, now it's going two microseconds per step. And we speed it up, we can get it up around, I think that's around 40-ish per step, and you can see the servo moving over on the left. And there's no really way to see, but right now we got it right at around 25 microseconds per step, so. Next, we have the fail-safe section where we can test and show the current fail-safe position for the servo. Below that, we have the write all and read servo buttons, and those are really important for the brushless servos. We'll talk more about those later. Over on the right-hand side, we have the program area. Here's counterclockwise or clockwise. We can then choose the fail safe and program that position, the servo speed, the EPA adjustment. We'll go through that. And of course, dead band, the resolution, and then soft start. 20% is the slowest soft start, 100% is effectively no soft start. So let's go ahead and you notice there's not a program reset button. For the brushless of servos, you need to actually load the default file that is included with the software. So in this case, it's a 9380 and you saw I just opened up the 9380 file. And now we're back to factory defaults. And as we go back, we're actually seeing 60 degrees of throw in each direction and the center 1500 is just a little bit off and uh, we'll talk more about that. So 
What's important to know is that during the HSB programming, all of the information, what you're currently doing is in the program. It's not written to the servo. So what I just did was I unhooked the servo and rehooked it up and we're reconnecting. And if you notice, we loaded the default, but now look, just rehooking it up with not doing anything. We're back to what it was when we first plugged it in 45 degrees, both ways. And so let's do another test. Let's choose counterclockwise and slow it down to 50%. Now you can hear a little bit different. Uh, the slower speed of the servo. So let's unplug that now, just to kind of show you what happens. We just unplugged it. We'll go ahead and plug it back in and then we'll hit connect. And remember we changed counterclockwise and the servo speed. And as this connects, boom, it's back to clockwise and hundred percent. Well, that is because we didn't use the write all and read servo buttons down there. Now we actually don't need the read servo button, but you have to, after you make a program, even though the servo is doing exactly what you need when you're done programming it, you can save the file and everything, but if you don't hit write all, it doesn't actually write it to the servo. So what we did was just reloaded the default and we see the 60 degree. Now let's hit write right all completed so now the servo is effectively back to factory defaults let's unplug it we'll plug it back in and when this comes up we'll see that typical 60 degree and you can check over in the upper right hand corner as i'm going through the throws how it goes to 60 degrees from center so very important to use that right all so let's do another test. Let's change it to counterclockwise. And we see that. Let's change the speed down to 50%. And let's go ahead and set the EPAs. Now it's a little bit different. When we hit setting, it's asking we specifically have to set center. And now the values there, you see the red zero and minus 100 and 100, those are actually degrees. So you're moving, you're setting center in a certain amount of degrees from where it currently is. So right now, if we hit, it's negative 10 degrees, zero, 10 degrees, et cetera, et cetera. Now that doesn't really mean anything, but um, cause you're really setting it how you want your horn to be, your arm to be. So let's set this at negative 40 or let's go just so it's really egregious, negative 40. So we've sent, now we don't care about negative 40 because you have to be careful when you hit okay, the servo is gonna move 34 degrees to the left. So you can't program it any less than 34 degrees in each direction. And so now we see if we want to choose 44 degrees and this UI is a little, a little hokey, it's sometimes hard to get it exactly the way you want it because um, clicking on the bar does uh, 10 degrees, but clicking on the arrow does 0.5 degrees. But if you drag it, you can get it into an, an odd number and it's hard to get it exactly where you want it. So what we're, we're going to do 56.9 and that's degrees from where we set center. And so now we hit okay and we'd hit right. And you notice the arm will go 34 degrees to the right of where we hit center. So keep in mind, if this is in a model and it's connected up to your control services, it's going to move. And if you don't want it to move 34 degrees, it could cause some damage. So that's where the brushless servos make a difference. Okay, so now we've programmed it. It's kind of a wonky programming. And we also have counterclockwise and 50% speed. Let's save this. We just call this a demo. Now, if you notice, we didn't hit right all, but we did save the config. So that config is not actually written to the servo yet. It's being done in the program. Let's unhook the servo. Actually, let's go ahead and reload the default, the 9380 default. We see it go back to the default slightly off center. And we see clockwise 100% and we're back to that 60 degree throw. So now I'm also doing this to show that uh, we're gonna disconnect the servo replug it in and can you guess what what configuration is going to come up when it loads 
if you remember kind of it can be confusing we just have to remember when you did write all and in fact it was the the default and so if you're kind of messing around and, and you messed up and but you might be a little disappointed here but remember we did save that config that wonky config that we did with counterclockwise and 50 percent on those crazy endpoints so we can go and open up that config demo and we'll see the servo automatically move to that new wonky center and we have counterclockwise and 50% speed. And so now we'll just kind of go through the motion. We see 44 degrees and 57 degrees. Now let's write all this actually writes that configuration to the servo. And now that servo is programmed. One last test. We're going to reset to default just to show you. how important this is. So now we've loaded the default, that's what's in the program, but on the servo, it's still this wonky connection. So we're going to unplug, plug it back in, connect it, and we're back to our wonky configuration, counterclockwise and 50% speed. So let's, show you what the read servo button does. Let's reload the default, 9380 default. So remember, it's default in the program. It's not changed anything on the servo yet. But say we were playing around and we're just gonna mess around. I happen to know this one is where I have the arm. It's actually 10%, 10 degrees to the right is about right and 90 degrees to the servo case. So we're gonna set for 45 degrees. And so, that's what's beautiful about setting the endpoints is that now if we just want to arm to move 45 degrees in either way, it's really easy to do here. We can click the bar once and then click the arrow twice to get 45. And now we know that the throw between 900 microseconds and 2100 microseconds is exactly 45 degrees in each direction. And we can see that in the upper right hand corner. So remember, we never wrote all Everything we just did is just in the program. Say we messed up on that 45 degree throw and we wanted to revert back. Hitting read servo is going to reread what's on the servo. And what is that? That is our wonky configuration with counterclockwise 50% speed and the really weird endpoints. So in this case, I have that 45 degree setting uh, saved. And you can see I have a LA7 elevator right, position 10 is where center is, and it's programmed for 45 degrees in both directions. We'll open that up. And this is very much like the setting we just did. And we will just double check 45 degrees in one direction, 45 in the other. And we will hit right all to move that configuration onto the servo, and we are done. So I know this was a little repetitive, but I wanted to show you what you can do how to use the read servo if you mess up, what you have to do to, to keep those settings saved. And sometimes you will program your servo, you will pull it out, put it in your model, plug it in, and it's totally not what you programmed. And it's because you might've forgotten to hit right all. So everyone, thanks for tuning in. I really enjoy showing all these differences between the HSB brushless servos programming and the D-series programming. There's pros and cons to both. The D series is a little bit easier and a little bit straightforward, but with the angle measurements, you can really get a certain level of exactly what you want with the brushless servos. However, you can't program it to only move 10 degrees. You have to program it to move at least 34 degrees and it's going to move. As soon as you hit okay for sending the center, it's going to move the arm so that could Take some time if you're being really careful, taking the push rod off the arm, moving it, putting it back on. And I show that in this long video where I'm ganging aileron servos using this method. So, and also, you know, the, the writing of the configurations with the D series, everything you set takes immediately and is written to the servo, whereas the HSB, you have to make all your settings and write them to the servo. So tune in for the last episode of this series where I will be using a 7955 or 54, or maybe even an older HS series to show you the different options yet again for the older HS series. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you soon.